Hello and welcome to another episode of Hosanna, where we're still going through Archangel Gabriel's description and prophecy of what is going to happen in future years when from Daniel's time until the birth of the Messiah. And I want to tell viewers that really the prophecy of Archangel Gabriel also includes things that you and I will still experience in future to come, particularly talking about the time of the Great Tribulation and the rise of the Antichrist. We're going to pick up where we left last episode, and that's the 11th chapter of the prophecy of the book of Daniel, and we're talking about verse 21. To remind people of where we were, we were talking about the fights and the wars between the kingdom of the north and the kingdom of the south. The kingdom of the north is ruled mostly by the Seleucids, and these are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and the kingdom of the south, and these were ruled by the Potlemies, Potlemy 1, 2, 3, and 4, the northern dynasty and the southern dynasty. And after the Potlemies came over, Potlemies 1 to 4, then the other kings that took over the southern kingdom, which includes Egypt, is Antiochus. And one of them specifically was Antiochus Epiphanes. Let's look on the text before us in verse 21, where we read the, the following. He, that means the Antiochus who, uh, who, so Antiochus is simply the title of the king, just like Pharaoh, that's not the name of the king, that's the title of the thing, Pharaoh such and such, Pharaoh such and such. Here we talk about Antiochus, and there's Antiochus 1, 2, 3, 4. So the last Antiochus was gone, and we never heard of him before. This time we're going to move on into Antiochus the Epiphanes. Verse 21, he will be succeeded by a contemptible person. That's Antiochus Epiphanes. He was someone that was contemptible person. We've heard about this Antiochus before in previous episodes. Who has not been given the honor of royalty? This particular Antiochus has not been given the honor of royalty. The angel tells us, that he will invade the kingdom which its people feel secure. Now we've heard about this before. The king Antiochus, uh, uh, his name we know now, is going to be Antiochus Epiphanes, and he's a symbol of the Antichrist who will take over the nation of Israel at the, uh, w before, and in the future will also hurt and torment the people of God. He will invade the kingdom which its people feel secure and he will seize it through intrigue. Yes, in chapter 8 and verse 23, we read that Daniel describes him as a master of intrigue. Unlike Christ, who we said was transparent as chrysolite and as white as, as linen, Satan or the Antichrist will be as cunning and will be as divisive and will outsmart people and will be a master of intrigue. Verse 22, then an overwhelming army, he talks about the army that took place, the overwhelming army will be swept away before him, both it and a prince of the covenant will be destroyed. The prince of the covenant, that is to talk about Jesus Christ, that's in words of prophecy, destroyed as in be put to death on the cross. Verse 23 says, after coming to an agreement with him, and yes, it will seem like he will come with an agreement with those people, he will act deceitfully, and with only a few people he will rise to power. So it looks like that when the Antichrist will come, only a few people will support him at the beginning until he rises up to power. And here we learn about an important uh, character of the Antichrist, the fact that he is deceitful. It's important that you and I recognize that we cannot be deceitful in our relationships with one another. Honesty, purity, transparency. Unlike this Satan who is deceitful, don't be deceitful in your dealings with people. Don't be deceitful and untrue at work, in your relationship with people around you at home with your family, with your spouse, with your children, with your ch church and your servants, your friends, do not act deceitfully or else 
you are nothing but a resemblance of the Antichrist. Verse 24, we hear the following, when the richest provinces feel secure, and that's in keeping with what we had heard in verse 20, in Daniel 8, 25, and that's also in keeping with what will happen when the Antichrist comes. So here, my beloved, we are understanding about the pyramids of prophecy. Although when you look with a telescope on these three pyramids or these three mountains, they will look to you in the screen if you look as if it's one, but in essence, they are three. And so one could be a, a prophecy, meaning the future. A pro prophecy will happen in the near future and in the very remote future and then in the so much remote future and really years to come. One prophecy can mean all three. So here this particular prophecy is talking about Antiochus Epiphanes and in the future it will also imply what's going to happen to the Antichrist. And so this Antiochus character, Antiochus Epiphanes is nothing but a mini Antichrist, a miniature Antichrist. Whatever happened with him is going to happen again in years to come with the Antichrist. So verse 24 tells us, when the richest provinces feel secure, and indeed Egypt, which was one of the richest provinces at that time, it felt secure with Antiochus Epiphanes, he deceitfully acted, and he will invade them and will achieve what neither his fathers, the other end Antiochus, nor his forefathers did. He will distribute the plunder and root and wealth among his followers. And yes, that will happen with the Antichrist to come. When he becomes in power and deceive people, he is going to take all the power and the wealth and the knowledge and the money and the resources and give it to only people who worship and obey him. In the book of Revelation, we read that he's going to give them a mark, a mark on their forehead or on their hands. And only if they have the mark of the beast will they be able to purchase and do daily businesses. Did you know that now there are companies that are talking into putting a microchip that carries all the information and all your banking information, all your social security information onto those chips and putting it... And they did studies and they found that the best and the most secure place to hide these microchips is when they put it either in the forehead or in the forearm. Very much in keeping with what the book of Revelation says, that they will keep this little mark or the mark of the beast on their forehead and their forearm. Back to the text. He will, it says that he will plot the overthrow of fortresses, but only for a time. And indeed, the Antichrist will not be able to win forever. It's only for the time allowed to him by Christ. Verse 25, with a large army, now we're going back to the, uh, to the Antiochus Epiphanes. With a large army, he will stir up his strength and courage against the king of the south. And yes, in the book of Ezekiel, we hear prophecies about fights and wars between the king of the north and the king of the south. Some Bible scholars say, oh, that king of the north will be mastered by the Russian empire who is going to come. And then the, the army from the south mastered by the European allies and the African allies and will master and the Saudi Arabian the Peninsula, they will master an army and that will be the beginning of the battle of Armageddon. With a large army, he will stir up his strength and courage against the king of the south. The king of the south will wage war with a large and powerful army, but he will not be able to stand because the plots devised against him. Yes, so there will be some, this king will not win, he will not be able to conquer the king of the north because of the misunderstandings and that people from the king of the north will support him and will be with him and will not give power to the king of the south. At one point in time, they're going to sit together and make a treaty. Look at verse 26, it's important. Those who eat from the king's provisions will try to destroy him. What does that mean? that people are going to try to betray him. 
the king of the south will not be able to succeed initially because his own followers are going to betray him to the point that his army will be swept away and many will fall down in battle yes that happened with our with our god jesus christ he also although he was foreknown to him what will happen he was betrayed by judas one of his 12 disciples verse 27 those two kings that's antiochus epiphanes the king from the north and the Potlemy's king, a Potlemy number four. So Potlemy's king number four from the south and Epiphanes, come, Antiochus Epiphanes, who is coming uh, uh, a king from the north. Those two kings, those who cannot f- sit together, it says those two kings in verse 27, although their hearts or with their hearts they're bent on evil, will sit at the same table and they will lie to each other so they're going to sit at the table each one of the kings is going to talk to the other that happened in history if you read history you'll see that they organized a special meeting between Antiochus Epiphanes and Potlemius number four and they hate each other however they sat and they smiled at each other and they talked civilly with each other and each one promised peace to the other. And in his heart, there was hatred. Yes, my beloved, this is going to happen again at the time of the Antichrist. When the Antichrist comes, he will negotiate deals with countries, nations, and armies. And it will seem that he is promising them and they are promising him to work together and be allies. But there will be lies within their heart. My question to you is, when you sit at your dinner table, do you sit with your spouse, you sit with your husband and your wife, with your children, and you're transparent and you talk to each other honestly and truthfully, no deceit? Or do you sit as these two leaders sat together and their hearts were bent on evil? Hearts bent on evil, what a description. What an evil description of a king, to have your heart bent to doing evil. When Christ came onto the earth, he walked the earth and he wanted to do good. Everywhere he went, he would heal people and cure their illnesses and sicknesses and he had compassion on them. But to no avail, back to our text in verse 27, because an end will still come at the appointed time. And we will read about that in verse 29, the appointed time where at that time, Antiochus Epiphanes died, of course, of natural causes, as we learned. And the same thing will come to the Antichrist. He will also die, of course, of natural, or I may say, supernatural causes, because Michael and his enemies and his angels are going to destroy the Antichrist. Verse 28, the king of the north, and that's still Antiochus Epiphanes, the angel says, The king of the north will return to his own country and he succeeded and he brings with him great wealth, but his heart will be set against the holy covenant. Yes, at that time Antiochus Epiphanes, although he was able to conquer Egypt and King Patlaimus IV, however his heart was disdained from the Jewish nation and the people who worshipped the God of Israel. He wanted them to worship the Greek gods, and that is Jupiter. He hated them, and he went, and he took the Jews into great torment and disaster, up until, as we know, Judas the Maccabean took possession of the temple and re-consecrated the temple, and by that the Jews, our friends, they celebrate the feast of Hanukkah, and they use the menorah, that candle that had eight lights symbolizing the eight days where the oil lasted in the temple of God for eight days. Back to the text, his heart will be set against the holy covenant. And in days to come, when the Antichrist comes, he will be with great wealth. And it may seem that he is interested in the church, however, his heart will be bent against it. That means inside his heart, 
will be hatred for God and his people. He will take action against it and return to his country. Yes, my beloved, that is what has happened on a mini scale at the time of Antiochus Epiphanes and what will happen in times of the future. And we will read more about times of the future and the Antichrist in next episodes as we continue our study in chapter 11 of the prophecy of the book of Daniel. Until we meet again, have a great day and take care.